I think it, a lot of it depends on where you sit. If you're obviously a manager or an owner of a company, you have to share those expectations. It's, it's unreasonable for you to get upset at people that are working for you and not share what those expectations were that they're not meeting. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi, and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. My name's Rick Nusky, and today I'm going to be talking with the wonderful Mr. Ben Winter about expectations. Welcome to the show, Ben. Thanks for having me. It's absolutely my pleasure. Now, uh, you and I were just touching on expectations prior to the call, and, you know, it's something that um, I, I don't think it is explored deeply enough, and you've decided to spend your time, you know, taking a very deep dive uh, look at this, but before we jump into that part of the call, Ben, it's customary for me to learn a little bit more about you and share your background, your personal life, um, I, I guess your hobbies with the My Future Business audience um, before we jump into the call. Would you mind uh, sharing a little bit about yourself with the audience? No, not at all. So my background's pretty wildly diverse. I spent about nine years in the corporate world doing um, some mind-numbing stuff. So I'm not going to get into that because that was <laughs> kind of my last life. And then yep. uh, when I left that corporate job, that's when I started to explore various things like entrepreneurship. And um, I had been doing improv for a little while, but I've been doing improv for over a decade now. And I would say improv is kind of that key that really brought all this together, which is um, the rules of improv that kind of apply to the stage apply to life. And I just started to explore that and um, got into teaching improv for businesses and individuals, and then just sort of expanded there from writing a book about it to writing more about the expectations piece, which we'll get into. Yep. And so other, other than that, I've, you know, traveled to many exotic places around the world. I've done so many things in the, in the last 10 years. It's just, <laughs> I, I look at it and I'm like, I'm jealous of that guy who got to do all those things. Oh, it's wonderful. And I have to remember, remind myself I was the guy that did those things. I, I wonder, um, Ben, has, has travel given you a new perspective, a wider perspective of your own life? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I've done a lot of in my life is personal growth, and that's more or less awareness training. Uh, it doesn't matter what personal growth you do or who you get it from. It's at the end of the day. You get to see yourself, you get to become aware of yourself, and that's what really kind of explores. Uh, a, a, it's a way for you to reflect on yourself and see what you've done, haven't done, what you want to do, and what's held you back. So, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, before we go into, I guess, the core of the core, I'd love to talk a little bit about your time um, acting as well as even being in, in a movie. That's, that's big news. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so part of doing the improv is I just kind of put myself out to those communities um, in Denver, Colorado, and uh, some random connection, this guy at local in town has been wanting to kind of do a sci-fi movie just because he's had it in his, in his mind and he wanted to see it as a movie. And he reached out and I auditioned and I got a part in that movie. Now I'm in the movie. I don't know if that movies have been released or not, uh, which is the funny part um, because this is the guy's weekend project. So uh, it, it definitely will be an interesting movie to see if it ever does come to fruition. To see the lot uh, of day. Yeah. And the funny thing is I've seen some of the, the video from that and I have to say it's the worst acting I've ever done in my life. So I've learned a lot from it. And, uh, but it's helpful because it got me to think a little bit differently when I've done plays with friends um, and other people around town that have either written plays or directed plays. And so it's been a lot of fun. I love entertaining people, love being on stage. So I, lo I love this story already. It's going to be a fascinating <laughs> call. I wonder when you when you have your downtime, your personal time, do you do you enjoy hobbies? Is there something else that you like to do? Do you like sports or anything? Um, I, I'm actually a kind of a big fan of indoor lacrosse uh, mm -hmm. when I can go see it. 
it's not one of those things that's happening right now. Mm-hmm. And um, I have an 11 year old, so he he spends he takes up a lot of my Your time. time. Yep. And he is in sports and playing sports, so half the time I'm just kind of a taxi driver, but I get to at least watch the game, so it's fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. I I know that having children. Um, and I think it's probably a good segue is that they um, seem to set expectations for you as well as themselves. I I wonder if we can start there and talk about um, children and expectations and then go into how you came about writing your book. Yeah, sure. What would you, what do you want to know about kids and expectations? Well, I, you know, (laughs) I have my own children and I think to myself, you know, they come to you and they, they have this expectation that everything's going to be laid out in front of them. And I wonder, is this something that we, uh, you know, this idea of expectations uh, is born from a young age and do we carry it with us into our adulthood? Oh, absolutely. So expectations actually come from how we're raised, Mm -hmm. uh, mostly from our parents and how they view the world and how they act with the world, but also from school, from friends, from society that we grow up. And so if we're constantly seeing um, food in the pantry, food in the refrigerator, then we expect as we grow up that there's always going to be food in the pantry and the refrigerator. It's an expectation that we don't even think about most of the time. And it's not until we're like, oh, I've got to run to the store or somebody forgot to get something from the store that we kind of start to realize, hey, I, I was expecting that to be there. Yeah. And so most of our expectations are absolutely healthy. They're good for us. And we just don't think about them most of the time because they are inherent to our daily lives. You know, we go to bed at night expecting to wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, So kids absolutely learn from their parents and their surroundings what life is supposed to be. And that creates those expectations. Yeah, I know that you've really honed in on this particular field. It's not one that I've spoken about much on the hundreds and hundreds of (laughs) times that we've had conversations on the show. It's very unique. Um, You've gone ahead and you've not only written the book, which I'd love to, I guess, dissect in a little while, but you coupled it with some other resources, flowcharts and the likes. I was wondering if we could talk a little bit about um, these two parts. Yeah. So my first book uh, that I wrote that was specifically around improv and using it as a daily practice, uh, there was a a quote that I kind of came up with, which is that the only reason anybody ever gets upset is because an expectation hasn't been met. Mm -hmm. And so I started to explore that after writing that book. And I figured, okay, so if you're upset, what do you do about it? And so I kind of created a flow chart that really kind of tackles an emotional problem mentally. Uh, If you ever think about Einstein, who says you can't solve a problem at the same level it was created, he was kind of talking about you can't solve an emotional problem emotionally. Um, You can't solve necessarily a physical problem physically. Sometimes you have to do it mentally or emotionally, stuff like that. And so I decided to take the mental approach for an emotional problem. And so a flowchart is a very mental process. It's you kind of go through one step and to the next and you just kind of work your way through it Mm -hmm. and eventually you come out with a a point where you can kind of take that upset moment and turn it into something else and from there it was pretty simple of like i need to create a book about this that really kind of defines expectations where they come from how to work through them and and so on and so forth do you find that it's a uh, like an arduous task? Is it a is it a long journey? How quickly can we turn the ship around if we're if we're going through these expectations that are not met and we want to change it? Yeah, just like any other new thing in our lives, you have to practice them. So it can be very instantaneous once you've practiced enough. And other times, it requires talking to other people. And so it it, it can happen very quickly. It could take a long time Uh, if if we have a an expectation that's so ingrained in our system that we're just automatically triggered by it every time something happens uh, it might take many many times of that trigger to do something different to take that moment and say "Mm, i need to I need to not respond the same way. You need to change it up a little bit. I, I'm wondering if we can take a bit of a journey through your success improv business and, and look at that and see how that relates to expectations and what you're doing in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Success Improv was kind of the company that came out of the improv training. 
the improv book that I wrote. Mm -hmm. And the, the best way to put it is that we live a life of improv. We don't wake up with a script next to our bed. And even if we did, we couldn't memorize the entire day. And there's <laughs> no way that everybody else would stay on script. You wouldn't so, want to do that anyway, would you? <laughs> oh, no. It would, unless we could all speed read and memorize like nobody's business. I mean, that would be great. But um, you'd also know it was going to happen during your day. And that's not any fun. So uh, it really came down to taking those 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 rules of improv that apply to stage improv and bringing them down to the masses to the people that live a daily life to uh, that work together with a team that have a family any kind of relationship and utilize those tools and techniques of improv to really thrive in the world and have a better life so um, success improv is really that particular business and um, unfortunately it's a little harder to do right now with uh the pandemic and the world we live in <laughs> oh yeah uh, but when we can do them and do team building and other training with uh, businesses it's just so much fun and people get so much out of it um you know this like you're talking here about it being a mindset it's a shift in thinking um as you i guess you hone your skills in this area and you become more aware does your intuition improve do you become, I guess, one step ahead of the pack in terms of, hey, look, I know that this is what I used to think like, um, and then you, I guess, avoid that disappointment? To some degree, absolutely. Uh, it, it's funny, when I'm in a, a room of people with maybe 30 people in the room, somebody will say something, and because I've done improv for as long as I have, I can think of three or four different things of how I would respond or how I interpret what they say. And a lot of times I go to humor because that's, that's the background I have with improv. <laughs> yep. And so I might snicker when somebody is saying something because I just had this wonderful uh, screenplay that just went through my head. <laughs> and so in a manner of speaking, that creates a really fast synapse in the brain. So I'm able to respond differently to a lot of situations and I, it, in a way it's sort of intuitive mm -hmm. and in sort of a way it's just a way to think faster and respond differently so it is a practice that absolutely helps in daily life so this is a very individual thing isn't it this this whole expectation uh, management let's call it I, I wonder how this um would apply in a group think situation in large groups in teams you know you talked about your corporate background because oftentimes i've seen in those sorts of environments and uh, i guess the my future business audience by and large are startups and uh, entrepreneurs business business owners how can they uh, i guess position themselves to manage expectations in those sorts of settings do you think so it, it i think it a lot of it depends on where you sit if you're obviously a manager or an owner of a company uh, you have to share those expectations. It's it's unreasonable for you to get upset at people that are working for you and not share what those expectations were that they're not meeting. So if you realize that you're upset because somebody didn't do something, but you hadn't shared what you wanted them to do, you kind of have to sit, you have to take a step back and um, share that information. It's it's called communication. And mm. We kind of suck at that these days yes. in society, uh, but it's called communication at the end of the day. And if you're on the other end, if you're an employee and you have expectations of management, well, you kind of have to take that risk and go talk to them and say, hey, I'm uncomfortable or this is something I've been thinking about or what do you think about this? And sometimes it's the approach in that communication that has to not be so con uh, confrontative confrontational you know? confrontational thank you <laughs> trying to make up words all of a sudden <laughs> it's okay we're imp uh, improvising <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> so you don't want to create confrontation uh it's more of education like hey yeah. here's how i'm feeling here's what i'm thinking what are your thoughts on that um, how do you feel about this and it, it's almost in a negotiation process at that point and if your boss is you know sucks then you now have to manage that expectation of, okay, so I have a boss that's not going to be helpful. What can I do about that? And so it becomes an internal discussion, internal communication of how to best respond in the future. 
I heard of this uh, locus of control. So this is about looking inwards as much as it is about cum communicating with those around you, isn't it? Oh, 100%. I would say most of the time when we're upset at an expectation not happening, we didn't even know we had the expectation to begin with. Yeah. So most of the time we can stop right there and say, okay, I didn't know I had that expectation. Let me explore it. Where does it come from? Is it reasonable? And all the various questions that are going to take you through the process that really just kind of, okay, that's not a reasonable expectation. That came from my mom 23 years ago when there was no internet or, you know, whatever it may be. <laughs> yeah. So now I have to think differently. I can, I can change the narrative for myself and then I can communicate that effectively with those around me or even with yourself. Yeah. Because oftentimes we get upset at ourselves for not doing that thing we said we were going to do. I'm going to go to the gym today. Well, I didn't go to the gym. So now it's like, Arr. well, have a little conversation with yourself. Is the day over? Can you still go to the gym? There's do you still work time. twice as hard the next day? Yeah. You, you, know, you, you communicate with yourself sometimes. And I, I'd like to explore your day because I think as a practitioner of this, <laughs> this field, um, you know, I might wake up of a morning and I might feel a little bit under the weather and therefore my perspective of the world around me might be a little bit shadowed by negativity or whatever. Um, what do you do to prepare yourself to accept um, and prepare for a, a good day, let's call it, in terms of managing expectations? Is there a well, I've kind of, well, I, I think it overall, because I've been practicing personal growth and self-awareness and everything for so long, I just wake up expecting to have a good day. And it's okay to have that kind of expectation. It's also necessary that when something doesn't go well, that you don't take that as like the rest of the day is messed up. Yes. It's that particular moment that has to be dealt with. So I can still have a great day. I can deal with what's happening in front of me and then move on with it. And yeah, there are days. I'm not perfect. Nobody is. <laughs> Nobody there is. are days where I just want, I'm like, I want to go to bed at three in the <laughs> afternoon and not wake up. It's fine. Uh, but then I typically will do something different because again, if it's an emotional issue you're having, go do something physically, go meditate, uh, AKA something spiritual, um, go write down a list, you know, do something mentally, physically, or spiritually to get out of that emotional state. And a lot of times just going on a walk or going on a bike ride switches the whole mood. Yeah. So, thank you. Um, yeah. This, this is a great conversation. I'm really loving it. Taking a lot of um, great content away from it. I, I, I sit here and I think to myself, well, I've got my hands on your flow chart, but I don't know how to use it. What, what am I going to find when, when I get access to this? So, a lot of people say you should you shouldn't be upset. Being upset's a horrible mm -hmm. thing. I actually say go ahead, get upset, mm -hmm. because that is the that is the point in time that you can actually change everything. Um, you can use that, and that's where the flow chart flow chart starts. Is you're upset, so you kind of walk through the flow chart of, okay, I'm upset. Um, you know, did I know that I had this expectation? Well, okay, if I did know that I had that expectation. You know, then you'd start walking through that particular path. And if you didn't know you had the expectation, which is more often the case, you have to take that step back and explore where that expectation is. And sometimes that's all that's necessary to shift everything. And it, again, it's, it's just a practice, something you have to do on a regular basis. So every time you're upset, just have that flow chart sitting out, sit, have it on the wall. You know, I sit in traffic and I get upset. And it's completely <laughs> unreasonable for it. And I go through the flow chart mentally and I'm like, is it reasonable? No, it's still not reasonable for me to be upset at traffic. It never will be. There's no way I can communicate with millions of other people on the road. And there's no way that I can negotiate with them that we're on the same page. So I have to just let it go at that very moment. Yeah. And when I get upset at traffic, it lasts a few seconds now instead of, the entire drive so this is about remapping your mindset isn't it you can retune and uh, refocus when you're in these these pinches let's call it traffic in this case yeah absolutely and one of the ways to rewire it is getting back to that communication piece that we all so desperately need in our lives um, 
if other people are not meeting your expectations, most of the time it's because you've never shared those expectations. They don't know. You, yeah. Stick with your, I mean, you're just your relationships at home. If you can make those more peaceful, your life's happier. And how often do we not communicate with those that live under the same roof oh. and say, hey, I have an expectation about laundry, about the dishwasher, about dinner, about food, about chores, simple stuff like that. Yeah, we we may have our expectations of how we grew up about when chores are done and how they're done. But now you're living in a house with somebody else who had a different growth experience where maybe chores are done at different times and different ways. And so you kind of have to maybe talk. <laughs> you know, I know it's, it's a <laughs> it's, new, it's, new thing. It's conceptual now. now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It just sort of, it very much explains, you know, in my own life, why my wife and I don't get along occasionally. And, and it's completely valid is that she doesn't know what I want, nor do I know what she expects. And just having that chat sitting down and I'm a very busy minded person. I'm thinking fast forward. I'm thinking days ahead and I'm, I'm going through all these different scenarios in my mind. What do you say to people that are like that, that don't live in the now and they, you know, go off dreaming as it were? Yeah. Well, it, it's a practice. Uh, in the, in the book itself, there's an example of a husband and wife and you know the wife says hey honey take out the trash and he's watching the game and so he doesn't immediately take out the trash so the expectation is he's to take out the trash yeah but what's kind of missing there is the when and the why and um, all the expectations around it because maybe she just made fish or whatever and threw mm -hmm. all the fish guts in the trash and she doesn't want the house to stink because the guests are coming over now, if she would have said, honey, take out the trash because I just threw fish in there and the guests are coming in like an hour and I don't want the house to smell. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you have a clear expectation of what she wants. You understand. At the, exactly. At the same time, you could turn around and say, hey, this game is still on. It's going to be over in 20 minutes. Can I do it then? And you're having a, a negotiation. You're talking. You're communicating. I know trash is a simple thing, but if we don't start at the simple things, we're never going to get to the bigger things. So... And again, if you can communicate well within the household, it's kind of a practice that allows you to communicate outside the household. So for everybody who's listening on the call today, these are foundational steps to living a better life, both personally and professionally, I can well imagine, Ben. Now, I know that you have authored other books. I'm wondering if we can touch on those a little bit. What else have you written about? So the first book is called Living Unscripted, and that one is... Uh, the subtitle is Life is Improv, Learn the Rules, Be Successful. And so I've touched on that a little bit of there are rules to improv. And when I first learned improv, I was completely scared because I was like, I'm not smart enough. I'm not funny enough. I'm not fast enough. All the reasons why I couldn't do it. Yep. And the first day in class, the, the teacher got up there and he said, hey, there are rules to improv. You follow the rules and you're going to do just fine. And I was like, I can follow rules. What are these rules you speak of? <laughs> Please and share. so, he, yeah, he went over the rules, explained them, and it made perfect sense. And I just absolutely fell in love with doing improv. And year after year after year of doing improv on stage, I really came to the realization that those rules apply to life, period. We live, in, we live a life of improv. And so I took those, the, the five main rules of improv, at least the way that I, I view them, and I put them in the book and explained each of those rules and how they work and how they work together. And it's just another way of processing life and treating it a little bit differently. Now you have um, a thing called the nationwide library challenge. What's that about? <laughs> that is a selfish way of getting book sales out there. Uh, <laughs> not going to lie. Uh, I'm, I'm putting it out there to get people to go to their local libraries. A, it supports the library and B if you request a book, typically they'll buy it for you um, or they'll buy it for the library and then uh, give it out to you to loan. So I've kind of put it out there to see how many libraries we can get the book in. Fantastic. All right, speaking about educational resources, I wonder um, for your own personal development, um, do you follow people? Do you like reading? How do you educate yourself and who do you follow? So my favorite right now is Gary Vaynerchuk. He's amazing. 
I feel like when he speaks very bluntly about things, oh, he's I totally res Yeah, he is. And I resonate with that so much. And yep. I, I kind of aspire to be there yep. uh, and share it because it, 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 you don't, it doesn't need to be fluffed up. It's right there. It's simple. Um, my book has been considered concise and a quick read. I don't need to fluff up the material. It's pretty simple. Um, it's just something most people don't think about. And so why would I fluff it up with hundreds of pages of extra words that mm -hmm. don't need to be there? So Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's uh, it's funny because it made me start to think about social filters and the way we act in, in society as a whole. What do you think about um, the wider world at the moment in terms of how we uh, use technology? Is that, a, is that a having an impact on our, uh, I guess, our perceptions and in turn our expectations? Yes, um, <clears throat> and I don't know that it's in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when we have expectations, the the I idea behind it is that we don't want to be wrong about what we think and feel yeah um, we expect others around us to feel and think the same way and it's pretty obvious that we like to stick into the corners with people that think and feel the same way that we do in social media it's very easy to say well i don't agree with you so i'm going to block you and i never see your information whereas this other person i totally resonate with what you're saying and i'm going to follow you and I'm going to agree with everything that you post and yeah. I hope you agree with everything I post. So social media definitely helps with um, feeding our necessity to be right and our expectations that what we think and feel are correct um, so that we don't have to ever be wrong because uh, nobody wants to be wrong. No. I've never asked a group of people and said, who wants to be wrong? And nobody raises their hand. <laughs> it's a good question. And, maybe <laughs> it's, <laughs> Now, if you figure out that you're wrong on your own, you might beat yourself up for five, 10 minutes, maybe a couple of days. But if somebody tells you you're wrong, you're going to battle them tooth and nail for years. Yeah. Yeah. You're just going to be like, nope, I'm not wrong. Not you're wrong. The... And then we share these things that just I prove that I'm right and you're wrong. And then, but their perception is the opposite. And so here we are in society today where nobody wants to be wrong. And everybody has all the ammunition they need to be right about what they think. And you know what? It, it comes to another question. Do, is it okay to be wrong? Is it okay to have that expectation? Absolutely. I absolutely think it's okay to be wrong. It's This is where education comes from. I mean, if kids came out of the womb being right about everything, mm -hmm. which honestly love of other people is about the most perfect thing ever that kids have. Um, but kids don't know everything they come out they learn things from their parents they learn things at school they might think one day two plus two equals five and then the next day they learn math a little bit differently and now they know it's four and you know education is one of those beautiful things that we have that we just don't utilize as a society and it's okay to be wrong it's yeah. okay to learn something new and it's not that we're necessarily 100 percent wrong we may just not have the whole picture and once we have the whole picture then we can come at it differently we, we can change our own uh, perception our own expectation about things it's wonderful insight it's sage advice so it's okay to be that imperfect human being i wonder um what's coming up for you ben i uh, are you writing, writing any more books? What actually, is, what's happening? I, so, yeah, I'm writing another book that kind of speaks to the whole not wanting to be wrong. <laughs> um, so I am writing that one. I'm writing another one about, um, it's called Procrastinations, which is different from procrastinating and different from patience. It's kind of a hybrid of the two. I love it. Yeah, so it's an interesting concept I'm exploring and playing with and kind of practicing in my daily life. I love speaking to authors because I know that there's a journey behind it. I know that there's a process you must follow to get the book written and a, a, I guess a, a level of uh, focus, you know, and d is it difficult for you to write and stay on target? Do you find that you fall off the perch occasionally as an author? Uh, lately, yes. My first book, <laughs> no. My first book just kind of, I sat down and just started typing it and it just it. was, it was just amazing. <laughs> um, I was I was crying at certain points because it was hitting home so well. Yeah. And other yeah. times I was really excited about it. 
um, and the expectation book, it was almost written for its by itself just through the flow chart. And it, it really just kind of came down to, am I, am I making sure that I hit all the points? Mm-hmm. Um, any of the objections, anybody that any might, anybody might think about that could contradict something. Can I address that before it's contradicted or whatever? And so that's kind of where I am with the other, the other books is, you know, do I have enough information yet? What else do I need to explore about them? Do I have enough material to create that book and so on? That's wonderful. Thank you so very much for uh, sharing everything that you have today on the show. Now, at the pointy end of the call, the most important thing for everyone to know is that when they want to work with you, Ben, um, where are they going to find you and what is the process that they will go through? So it depends on the approach or, or the need. Um, mm-hmm. If it's training, the, the website is successimprov.com. And uh, mostly I just like to talk to people and find out what their needs are and uh, a very customized approach. So, I, you know, it's just reaching out and having a conversation. And if it's wanting more information about the books that I have, I would start with havingexpectations.com. And you can download the flowchart for free. You can find the books, all the books listed there. And very memorable domains, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, I, I try and make it easy. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so very much again. Now, for everybody who's on the call, as is the, normally the case, I will be making all of the links um, available to you below this post. No matter where you see this call, you will find the links back to Ben. And in closing, Ben, I've had such a wonderful time spending some time with you on the My Future Business Show today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.